Well, I guess the Razorbacks in Faye Atville did bring the smoke, and LSU didn't at all run through it. In fact, they ran away from all the smoke. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome in to the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 103.7thebuzz.com. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on today to get started. Hope everybody's having a wonderful Wednesday. And uh, for those of you up in the Northwest Arkansas and Western Arkansas area, Hopefully you're staying safe out there. I decided to be an idiot and drive home last night from Fayetteville to Little Rock in that blizzard. And I made it home safe and sound. I have a four-wheel drive truck, which is, again, would not recommend it. But there were circumstances as to why I wanted to drive home and needed to drive home. So I made it. But uh, do not recommend. Do not do that. And I won't hopefully ever do that again. But still, uh, it was worth the travel, mainly due to the fact that Arkansas was able to defeat LSU and really get the revenge on the Tigers for that awful performance that the Razorbacks had against LSU the uh, first game of this SEC season. Now, let me say this before we get into the uh, specifics of this game. The fact that Arkansas lost to LSU might be one of the most frustrating things because LSU is such a bad basketball team. They may not win another game in conference. Like, they are bad. I thought Ole Miss was bad. LSU is the worst team in the SEC. I think they have to be. I haven't seen you know South Carolina play yet. Um, and I know that there's other teams there in the running too. Mississippi State, I think, is right there. But so far, LSU, I just they're bad. And so Arkansas, the fact that Arkansas lost to them is yeah, that's 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 a bad deal. Bad deal all around. But either way, Arkansas took care of business. They won 60 to 40 last night in Bud Walton Arena, and which was uh first off too, the crowd. Shout out to all of you that were there. That was incredible. There was probably 11, 12,000 people there at least. And considering the snow and how it was a Tuesday night, early game at 6 o'clock, the fans showed out. That's incredible. That's absolutely awesome. And kudos to all of you that made the trip. Uh, and, and I just, again, can't speak enough about you and uh, the job that you all did in making it to the game. But Arkansas just, you know, this game was personal. This game was very personal to Arkansas. They were personal because uh, I actually saw in my opening, I made the joke about what, uh, what like, it, it, like, it was so dumb. I, I like when players mix it up a little bit. You know, I like when they get into it and start talking a little trash. But the first time that Arkansas was able to beat, or loot, they lost to LSU, Adam Miller, number 44, went on Twitter and said, we in Fayetteville next time, bring y'all smoke, we gonna run through it. Yeah, that didn't happen. And so there was a little bit of, you know, stuff going on there. And you know that uh, in the, at the end of the play or at the end of the game against LSU the first time around, Anthony Black got a forearm shiver to his face for some reason wasn't called. So there was a lot of things that happened in that game. And after that game, that made Arkansas take this game extremely personally. And man, oh man, did they get off to their best start. Had to be the best half of basketball Arkansas has played so far this year, offensively and defensively. At halftime, they were up 38 to 14. 38 to 14. They held LSU to 14 points. Uh, LSU shot three of 25 from the field in the first half. From the field, that's 12%. They didn't make a three. They did go eight of 11 from free throw line. So they made more points at the free throw line in the first half than they did from the field. Horrible. Now, in the second half, they did a little bit better, and Arkansas did not do as well. They started shoot, They shot pretty poorly in the second half overall. But the fact that uh, they were able to come out swinging so much in the first half and hold on to it and keep the lead and end up winning by 20 uh, was really a great thing. Ricky Council ha had a nice game. In fact, his plus minus was the most on the team. People don't realize that. They're like, oh, we went 4 of 13 from the field. Yeah, but he had 10 points. He had six rebounds. He had seven assists and a steal. Uh, so, I mean, he and only one turnover. So he had a really good game. Didn't shoot the ball well, but everything else he did really well. Devo Davis had, I, I mean, it, it's kind of crazy to think about it. But Devo Davis right now is your best three-point shooter. I know that's crazy to, to say. I know that that probably doesn't make sense to a lot of you and to me even. Like, I wish I could uh, make sense out of it. 
but that is the case. Devo in this one goes two of two from three point land. It didn't shoot a whole lot, but in the past four or five games, he's your best three point percentage guy. He's your best three point threat. I, I still can't believe I'm saying that, but keep shooting Devo. Whatever you've done, have at it. I'm, I'm all for it. But he has 16 points. He goes seven of eight from the field, played every single second of this game. 16 points, seven rebounds, three assists, two steals, and only had two turnovers. So phenomenal, phenomenal game out of Devo Davis. Anthony Black comes in, also has uh, 14 points, seven rebounds, three assists, three steals for him. You have uh, Makai Mitchell had a really good game too. 10 points, eight rebounds, and one assist, three block shots. Did have three turnovers, a little too many there, but he played really nice. Uh, Jordan Walsh did some things here and there. He still kind of reverted back to not having as great of a game as what he did the past few games too. Jalen Graham even came in, six points for him and uh, about 16 minutes of play. Six points, three rebounds, a steal, a blocked shot. Uh, so it was just a good performance all around. You know, 60 points isn't exactly going to set the world on fire offensively, but you did enough defensively to really smother LSU to where they just had no response, no answer, no anything. You you beat them everywhere in every aspect. You out-rebounded them by one. Uh, you were able to have them uh, turn the ball over 15 times. You did 12. You had 15 assists. They only had six. You had seven steals. Blocked their shots five times. Um, and thank goodness only 27 fouls were committed in this game, which you know how funny that is? Because the first time these two teams played, 27 fouls were committed. I like that. I like that a lot, especially with a game that had a, a lot of uh, chippiness or uh, potentially could have had some chippiness there too. So it's good to get back on the winning track. Arkansas has now won two in a row in, in SEC play. They're going to get ready for Baylor this weekend, which we know is uh, going to be a big one for Arkansas for the uh, Big 12, SEC Big 12 Challenge. Arkansas is yet to win a road game during this challenge. And Baylor's a good team. They're coming off a, a nice win against Kansas. But it's just good to feel Arkansas putting some things together once again. You know, have they turned the corner? Is suddenly now everything's going to just poo, go off and they're going to go crazy? No, because the past two teams that they beat, they beat those teams at home, and they are the two, if not one of the two, worst teams in the SEC. So it's hard for me to really just feel like, oh, man, here we go. Here it goes. I mean, I'm happy for the wins. Don't get me wrong. But it's hard for me to just really start buying in and saying, yep, get ready, boys. Here we go. It's taking off. Uh, so, you know, we're, we'll see what they do against Baylor. If they do that now, if they win against Baylor on the road, then I'm then I'm going to start buying them like, OK, this is this is it. This is the turn. This is the turning of the corner. You know, right now they're kind of making like they're kind of turning the wheel a little bit. You know, like it, it kind of shows a little sign it's about to make the turn. You're not fully committed yet, but it's kind of slowly but surely moving there. So that that will be nice if they get, uh, were able to give it, uh, beat Baylor. But still, uh, this was a game that Arkansas really needed, and I'm sure it felt good to beat them. In fact, I mentioned the whole deal with Adam Miller. And he, again, for those of you who didn't, he was number 44 last night. He's talking a lot of trash. He's the one that did the elbow thing. Like there was a lot of stuff going on. And you could tell Devo especially – he wanted it. He was he was smoke. He was smothering him. Like Adam Miller didn't know what in the world hit him in that first half. He had zero points in the first half. Uh, he ended up going three of twelve from the field. He had nine points in the second half, which was his average. But it was all in the second half because again, Devo just ate his lunch up. Dude had no response, nothing. And you could tell it was a little personal because here after the game, Anthony Black and Devo Davis were asked about the situation with Adam Miller. And uh, needless to say, they did not hold back. Um, it wasn't personal for me. It wasn't for me. It was for Anthony. So, shoot, I do whatever it takes to back up my teammates. And that's what I did. He, I think he averaged nine in, in conference. That's what he had. So, we tried to hold him to his average or under. But not too personal, if, to answer your question. Not too personal. I mean, I didn't guard the better people. Thanks. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I mean, you kind of just seen what happened last game, so it kind of gave us a little chip on our shoulder. Uh, you know, they were feeling himself a little bit. He was feeling himself a little bit after last game, even though he didn't really do nothing. Mm -hmm. But talk about the smack face. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, just all that, just all the talking. Mm -hmm. But it, it was quiet today, though. Yeah, and it was real quiet the whole game. Yeah. He had a few buckets, but a few free throws though. It's trash. Free throw line. Dude, <laughs> man, yeah, yeah, that's a little personal, a little personal touch on that. Woo! I hope they meet again. Uh, probably not because LSU. The only way they'll meet is if uh, you know Arkansas really trashes it, 
and uh, LSU ends up winning one of their games in the SEC tournament, and then something like that happens. Like, that'll be the only time they face each other again, at least this year. But, woo, buddy, you can tell, isn't this a little bit more than what the average average deal was for Razorback basketball and playing in the SEC? So it was good to see that they got that back. They got a little bit of the swagger back. I want them to continue to have the killer instinct, though, because there was a little bit of time there where LSU pulled back and started uh, making it a little bit more interesting of a game. Which people were mad about, and I, I get—I would be—I'm frustrated by it too. But you got to remember, as uh, my guy Pinto always says on Twitter, it's a game of runs. And in the SEC, regardless of how bad a basketball team is, you still have some quality players in this league that are capable of putting on runs. It's just the way it's going to be. You have to be able to weather the storm, though. You have to be able to hold it off. It's going to happen. It happened against Ole Miss. It happened against LSU. It happened against Missouri. It happens against everybody, and it's vice versa. Arkansas goes on these runs against these other teams too. It's a game of runs. So you got to be able to have that killer instinct and to close them out and weather that storm. Arkansas did, so I'm not mad about it. Great job. So uh, I'm just happy that they could get that monkey off their back and they uh, got a little revenge against LSU. Again, it just kills me that they lost that first game to LSU. Like right now, like like losing to Alabama at home, it, that's that's a really good team. You lost to Auburn on the road. I mean, that's that they're they're a decent average team, but still, like winning on the road is tough. Winning, uh, you should have won at Missouri because you got boned in that whole thing with all the fouls. You should have beaten LSU. So, not taking anything away because you lost those games, but you still you should be in a better position than what you're at. It's now just about making up the making up that ground and getting back into the swing of things, especially with the NCAA tournament coming around here as well. We're going to talk about the Arkansas Razorback football new hire. They seem to have uh, filled out their defensive staff, and we'll talk about that here in just a second. But, folks, the NFL playoffs are here, and we are really excited about our new sports betting partner for Locked On because they're the number one sports book in America. It is FanDuel. And if you're new to FanDuel, that's even better because they have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. New customers join today to get started with $150 in free bets guaranteed when you have your first $5 bet. Just sign up at FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel has all your favorite bets from the money line to point spreads and to player props. Plus, you can even combine your bets for a chance at a bigger, a bigger payout uh, using the same game parlay. All on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use, which obviously is the most important thing. So football fans, don't miss out. Place your first $5 bet and get $150 in free bets, win or lose, at FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of the NFL. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so moving on into the next segment of the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. So uh, Arkansas had a new addition to the Razorback defensive staff on the football team where they hired Darren Williams. And I hope I'm saying it right. I'm sorry if I'm not. It's either Darren or Duran. I've seen it both ways. You know, I only think of uh, in the NBA, uh, Duran, and then, of course, in uh, here it could be Darren. So, but uh, Wilson, Coach Wilson, has been named the new secondary coach. It was official yesterday. He is a native of New Orleans and was currently, or was at least in his previous gig, a quality control coach working with cornerbacks at Florida. Uh, so prior to the 2022 season with the Gators, he was the defensive coordinator at McNeese State for two seasons. And he has very familiar territories, of course, being from New Orleans in the Louisiana area and uh, spending time in Florida there, too. He played football at Southern Miss and was on their Conference USA championship team back in 2011. Uh, we uh, for, This is all coming from Hawksports.com. According to sources, Dominic Bowman was encouraged to seek other opportunities. He was not retained. It's not that he was fired. But it was just a mutual like, hey, you probably need to move on. We're going to move on. We appreciate what you did. And there you have it. So they did the same thing with Sam Carter. So you're talking about now uh, the third different cornerbacks coach in three years. But anytime that you have a new defensive coordinator come in for no matter any team that you're dealing with or any school that you're talking about, odds are you're going to have that defensive coach or that offensive coordinator, whoever it is, want to bring in their guys, want to bring in their people. Now, it's not always the case, because if you look at Dan Enos, when he walked through the door, uh, his offensive staff was already put together. You know, he had Cody Kennedy on the offensive line. You had, uh, you had a new tight ends coach from Stanford. You had uh, Kenny Guyton. You had Jimmy Smith. So it's like, 
hey, coach, uh, you want to be our coordinator? Okay, well, these all guys are staying, so you're just going to have to work with them. <laughs> so I was like, all right, well, cool. Good enough for me. But uh, defense is something to where they needed a massive overhaul. They needed an overhaul with the defense, and that certainly seems like it's going to be the case there too. So uh, he's going to be uh, coming in. Hopefully he's a good recruiter. I think that that's extremely important, especially at that cornerback position. And for someone like uh, uh, he's going to work alongside defensive coordinator, co-defensive coordinator Marcus Woodson. So we know that because uh, he's the co-defense coordinator and safeties coach. Going to have him being the uh, uh, cornerbacks coach as well as working close with him as well. So that's where it's like, you know, I'm not saying that Barry Odom didn't hire who he wanted to hire or any that he wasn't allowed to or anything. But I do believe that there was a lot of like different pieces around on this coaching staff has pretty much been established that there wasn't a lot of great communication going on. There wasn't a lot of, uh, you know, uh, camaraderie maybe, or at least people being on the same page you know, on the coaching staff. I think that was pretty apparent. So they kind of had to make those moves and change that up to try to make it all work. And I think the defensive side of the ball may have been the biggest example of because Barry Odom left and with Barry Odom, he apparently, you know, like, like Michael Schur, the linebacker coach, it was inevitable he was going to go with him. So it's like those two were thick of thieves, and they were going to go no matter what. And then you had the situation where, um, you know, Dominic Bowman was kind of the cornerback's coach, kind of, you know, kind of hanging out there in the in the weeds, just waiting to see what ended up happening with him. And then when they brought in a new crew, it's like, hey, we're going to do things a little bit differently. We appreciate it, but we're going to move on. Deke Adams was the only full-time defensive coach retained which I'll say this, like Deke Adams, I actually like, I, I was kind of, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say I was pessimistic about his hiring, but I wasn't impressed at the time. I was like, man, this guy's been around a long time and he's got SEC experience, but you know, last year's Arkansas defensive line was so bad or at least uh, not great. And then this next time, and then in 2022, I was like, you know, how much better is it going to be? Well, it wasn't better. It was much more improved. It wasn't perfect but it was so much better than what it was the previous year. So Deke Adams uh, earned uh, a lot of trust for me and far as him being the D-line coach, and I think that he's so far doing a really good job. So I, I, I'm glad that he's staying, uh, at least at this point. I, I guess you can't even say who's staying and who's not, like for sure. You just never know. You have no idea what's going to happen. So either way, um, you have you have that that was pretty exciting to see now kind of put put together, and I don't know if – Coach Wilson's going to be great or not. I don't know if he's going to be able to recruit at a high level or not. But it is one of those deals where, hey, if that's what Travis Williams wants to do, is that's what Marcus Woodson wants to have, is that that's the guy that they want, so be it. Have at it. Good job. I'll trust you. I'll trust you with whoever you're putting in there, too. So now you got the staff, at least with the, uh, the, the position coaches, the assistant coaches and everything, fully put together. And it is official. It's done at this point in time. And as far as if you're looking at, you know, all the coaches thing, I think I'm going to probably do the podcast on this tomorrow. Uh, we're going to look at each coach that got replaced. And was it an upgrade? Or was it a downgrade? Or was it about even? Uh, we'll break that down uh, tomorrow on the podcast too. But still, just uh, nice to see uh, guys that also have recruiting grounds in very key areas for Arkansas. And hopefully uh, they continue to make the defense better. Because I'll be honest, the defense this past year and heading into this year, people were like, okay, how's it going to be? Well, can't be a whole lot worse, especially in the secondary. can't be worse. So it can only get better, right? And who knows? Maybe Arkansas's defense will actually be much improved and be able to hold their own for sure. So uh, we'll talk about the little bit of Razorback basketball in the way of uh, McDonald's once again, having another McDonald's All-American to their roster next year, and it's Bayfall but also have a problem with one of the players not being on there. Either way, we'll talk about it here on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so final segment here on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Congratulations to Bayfall, the uh, Razorback signee for uh, basketball in the 2023 class. He has been selected as just one of 24 prospects across the nation that's going to be competing in the McDonald's All-American game. And it was announced uh, this past Tuesday. And uh, Bayfall says, quote, this is an incredible honor and no doubt the highlight of my young career. The McDonald's All-American game has produced so many NBA stars like Magic Johnson, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, and LeBron James. To be even in the same conversation feels impossible 
to believe. So uh, he was named to it. I was a little surprised at least to see that Layden Blocker was not named uh, to the McDonald's All-American team. He, he's a bona fide five-star, but he's also right there. At, and again, everybody's got their own recruiting outlets that they use. But according to 24-7 Sports, he was the number 22 player in the country. And so, uh, yeah, I just I saw that and I was like, okay, well, all right, whatever. But it was borderline there. But like Kentucky had four players on McDonald's All-American team. Duke had quite a few as well. Uh, let's see. Did like, but I don't, I don't know. Again, I know that everything's looked at differently, but sometimes I wonder, it's like, how is, how does some of this work? Because like Auburn had a player named to uh, the McDonald's all American game that he's not even in the top 20. So again, they go by their own thing. That's fine. That's totally fine. But I still think like Layden blocker should have been, should have been named to that. And also like I saw Bronny James, LeBron James's son was named to it. And I don't think he really necessarily deserved it as far as what is on paper. Cause again, I know every recruiting outlet out there is different, but you're talking about a guy that is not a five star anywhere. Like nobody has him listed as a five star. He's a four star. And he's out of California, as we all know. He's LeBron James' son, as we all know. But I just don't think that he deserved that. He got in because he's LeBron James' son. And I think that that's kind of lame. And I, I wish I wish that wasn't the case. But again, what are you going to do? They, you know, you couldn't have it without LeBron James' son. But it's unfortunate because there's probably somebody out there that was a lot more deserving that got bumped because he just didn't have the right name. So either way, Arkansas still has one. So now that gives them four McDonald's All-Americans in two recruiting cycles uh, with Layden Blocker being a guy that should have been, or at least deservingly so, should have been right there in the mix as well. So that's big. Just got to keep that going. We know that uh, in the next year for 2024, and as far as the rankings go, there's still a lot of work to be done there, too. Ian Jackson, unfortunately, did go to North Carolina. Arkansas was in the running for him. But there are a few team players out there, five-star players, dudes that are in the mix that absolutely could be heading to Arkansas. And I don't see any reason to believe why they won't have some other players end up uh, coming to Arkansas from the McDonald's All-American, especially if you can continue to show that you uh, are able to get some big-time players uh, moving forward there, too. So either way, I just thought that that was kind of lame. He should have been named. Ronnie shouldn't have been, but who cares what I think at the end of the day? Stupid, but true. Appreciate everybody listening in to Locked on Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter at Buzz John Neighbors for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. We'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll